So recently I've had quite a few long-term iPhone fans telling me they want to jump ship from iOS to Android, a situation that seems to be massively fueled by lots of recent rather limp Apple offerings. Pretty much zero people wanting to jump the opposite way to iPhone, by the way. Just reporting here. Don't blame me if you're some kind of rabid Apple fan who's clicked on this video purely to spurt a seething tsunami of venomous fury at my face. Like some kind of horrific rage bakake. If you've been trapped in that Apple ecosystem for years now, you might be a wee bit hesitant to abandon ship and swim to the sunny shores of Android and cleanse yourself in the shimmering island pools of Google. Okay, abandon metaphor. Basically, you might be shitting yourself that swapping to Android will be a bit tricky, but fear not. Your Uncle Spurt's here to help, so come sit on my lap in a purely platonic fashion, no dodgy 1970s children's TV presenter type shenanigans going on here, and let's go through what you need to know. Now first up, one of the best reasons for swapping from iOS to Android is the diverse selection of smartphones you can choose from. After all, Apple still typically only serves up four new blows each year, and even the cheapest of these is still a wallet drain and slab that costs as much as a week-long boozathon in a sun-kissed slice of paradise. Now, at the very least, a wet and windy fortnight in Margate with all the white lightning you can down before your breakfast ends up splashed all over the nearest wall like a Banksy special. And yes, Apple has done a more affordable iPhone SE, which was already shockingly outdated when it launched two and a half years ago and the cheeky buggers are still charging 429 pun for it. On the flip side, however, with Android, you've got almost too much choice. If you want to spend a big old wad on your blower, you've got the Google Pixel 9 Pro, Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra, Xiaomi's excellent flagships, etc, etc. You can even grab yourself a dedicated gaming phone with obligatory RGB shenanigans, or something that's a bit bendy, if that's right up your alleyway. Your Uncle Spurt's personal favourite right now is definitely the Pixel 9 Pro. It's not quite as crazy expensive as some of those iPhones, but offers a thoroughly premium experience through and through. Some of the absolute best camera tech, fantastic performance, great battery life, and all at a reasonably compact form factor, so nothing to not love. Alternatively, you might want to spend a more modest amount on your next smartphone, and Android actually gives you that option. Again, plenty of options. Check out my recent video roundup of the best mid-range phones for some ideas, but the likes of the Pixel 8a, the OnePlus Nord 4, the Nothing Phone 2a and Samsung's Galaxy A55 are all proper solid choices. And if you are proper tight or skint and you want to spend as little as possible, well there's always options like the CMF Phone 1, which costs only a wee bit more than a chai latte from some wanky shortage cafe with bikes stuck on the walls. Now say that you've chosen your shiny spangly new Android blower and you want to copy everything over from your old iPhone. Well, grab your old iPhone, go to the App Store and do a bit of a search for Google One. And once that's downloaded, you'll want to sign in with your Google account. Now don't worry, if you don't already have a Google account, you can sign up right there in the app. It's completely free and easy to do. And once you're all signed in, you'll spy this sync box on the main page. Just give this a wee tap and you'll be able to set up sync in for your contacts as well as your calendars. And if you want to sync your photos and videos, you'll need to download the Google Photos app. Again, you can find this on Apple's App Store. No worries at all. Just do a search for Google Photos. Get that downloaded. And once this is downloaded, again, just sign in with your Google account and then you'll immediately see this option backup photos and videos on this device automatically. If you keep that switched on, then all your stuff that's here on the iPhone will get backed up again to that Google Cloud. All right, so now we're ready to set up your fresh new Android smartphone. Most of this is self-explanatory, signing into a Wi-Fi network, agreeing to a whole bunch of agreements. That's it, anything that says it's optional, just avoid, basically. And of course, connecting to your Wi-Fi networks, make sure you've got your password handy. Well, handily, if anyone else in your household has an Android device already and they're connected to that Wi-Fi network, get them to share it in their Wi-Fi settings. A big old QR code will pop up on their smartphone screen. All you've got to do is scan it with your new Android blower and boom, you're connected to the Wi-Fi. And then the next screen you should see is this one here, copy apps and data. So hit next. And because we've still got our old iPhone, we can hit next again. Now in this example, we're swapping to a Samsung blower, so we'll need to use Samsung's own smart switch. So our old device is an iPhone, so let's select that. 
And now you can connect the phones with a wire if you have an appropriate one. You'll need a USB Type-C to Type-C if you've got a more recent iPhone. Otherwise, you'll need a USB Type-C to Lightning cable. Otherwise, you'll need to use an adapter. Gotta love good old Apple making everything unnecessarily complicated with its dumb proprietary tech. But don't worry if you don't have a cable because you can just tap transfer wirelessly down here at the bottom. Don't try scanning the massive QR code that pops up on your Samsung smartphone. What you'll need to do is tap the link that says get smart switch on your iPhone or iPad. This will bring up a second QR code which you can then scan with your iPhone. And it should pop up now with a link to the Apple App Store. Otherwise, you can just basically open your App Store, type in Samsung Smart Switch, and again, this app will pop right up. Now, once Smart Switch is downloaded to your iPhone, hit Continue. Allow full access to your contacts. Allow access to your reminders. Allow access to basically everything so it can copy as much as possible across. And then with all that poking and prodding done, let's go. Again, you'll want to tap transfer wirelessly if you're not using a cable. And then just scan that big old beefy QR code that's displayed on your Samsung blower. And tap join. Alrighty, so our fresh new Samsung Galaxy phone and our iPhone are now connected wirelessly. So you can select exactly what to copy across. As you can see, you can do your contacts, your calendar, your photos and your videos in this case. So all that remains is to hit transfer and thy will should be done. So Samsung, a bit of a special case there, and a couple of other manufacturers use their own systems for copying files across as well, but the vast majority just use the standard Android effort. So let's check this out again. Just click Get Started or the equivalent on your phone. And again, you'll be prompted to copy your apps and data. So just tap Next. Yes, we've got our iPhone, so we're all good. And again, you can either copy your apps and data across with a wire, or you can do it wirelessly. Do Copy Without Cable and then tap switch in from iPhone or iPad, and then allow access to nearby devices. You've got to add your Google account. So just sign in with your username and password. And then it's basically the same setup as with the Samsung smartphones, except this time we need to install the switch to Android app on our old iPhone. So again, just load up the camera app on your iPhone, scan that code, and as you'll see, you'll get a link to the App Store. Otherwise, again, alternatively, just go straight to the App Store and search for Switch to Android. All right, once that's downloaded to your iPhone, just open it up and accept the usual terms and conditions. You'll then need to do another QR code scan, how we love it, and the two will pair right up. And then once again, select exactly what to copy, in this case, just everything. Once again, you've got to allow full permission to everything, otherwise it won't work. And then all of that will be beamed right across. And switch to Android will give you a couple of other handy tips as well for swapping across. For instance, turning off iMessage, absolutely vital to ensure that you keep on getting text messages. Gives you the instructions right there, but you can do it manually as well. All you need to do is tap settings, scroll down to the very bottom of the settings menu, you'll find the apps section and then scroll down until you spy messages. There's an iMessage option in here. Give that a wee poke so it's turned off like so. Job done. However, just to be absolutely sure that it's worked, you'll also want to jump into your web browser, Safari or Chrome or whatever, and head to this web address, https colon slash slash selfsolve.apple.com slash deregister hyphen iMessage. Scroll down on this website to the no longer have your iPhone section, enter your phone number and security shenanigans, and then tap send code. You'll get a security code sent to your phone. Just enter this. And that should be iMessage 100% wiped out. And back on Switch to Android, it'll also show you exactly how to copy your photos and videos from the iCloud. So if there's any stuff you've backed up to iCloud that you don't have on your iPhone, you can beam that across as well. Just hit Start Request and you'll be talked right through it. All right, so we're most of the way there, but now we've got to set up your email. So open up the Gmail account on your new Android blower and just tap add an email address. And as you can see, you've got a variety of options there, including good old Google, which you probably haven't been using if you've been on iPhone. You've got Outlook, Hotmail, and Live, good old Yahoo as well. Does anyone still actually use Yahoo? Otherwise, if your email provider is none of those, just tap other, and then you'll have to manually enter your details, which you can get from your email provider. And for any apps that you might need to download, just head to Google's Play Store. This is incredibly well equipped, so it should have everything you used to have from the old app store. 
The only exception has been some of those iOS specific apps. So for instance, you can't get Apple TV on Android devices, but no worries, just basically box set the whole of Ted Lasso and Severance before you bugger off from your old iPhone. It's pretty much the only stuff that's worth watching on there. However, if you're a big Apple Music fan, you will find that that is available on the Google Play Store. So you can download that, sign in and keep on using your subscription. Otherwise, all the other massive music streaming services are on here as well. Spotify, Tidal, yada yada. And once you've shifted over, you can immediately start reveling in all of those Android shaped benefits like, hey, being able to actually customize your smartphone. You can even install whole new launchers that completely change up the look and feel of your blower if you fancy it. I have done a roundup of the best Android launchers if you're a bit intrigued by all that. However, a couple of fair warnings before you do jump ship to Android. For instance, do you use a MacBook? If the answer is yes, well, Apple is going to make things unnecessarily uncomfortable for you. So for instance, if you want to quickly copy some photos off your Android phone onto your MacBook, well, Apple won't let you just plug and play like you can with a Windows laptop, for instance. It's possible to use third party apps to copy photos from your Android to your MacBook, but honestly, you're better off just using a cloud based service like Google Photos. And likewise, if you've got an Apple Watch, well, that ain't gonna play quite so nicely with your Android smartphone, but I would highly recommend swapping the Apple Watch for one of the many, many alternative options. And I have done a best smartwatches that aren't the Apple Watch roundup video, so grab yourself a tasty beverage and get a load of that one. And it's also worth bearing in mind that not all manufacturers are quite as good as Apple at that software support. So if you grab yourself a Google Pixel smartphone or a Samsung smartphone or a OnePlus, you're guaranteed years and years of OS and security updates. No worries, but not all manufacturers are quite that good just yet. So definitely check out reviews and the manufacturer websites to see what their commitment is. And that's about all that you need to know right now. If you're considering jumping from iPhone to Android, honestly, it's not quite as painful as it used to be a good few years ago, believe me. Best of luck in choosing your fresh new Android smartphone. As I say, there's a diverse selection out there. Definitely check out some of my reviews right here on Techspert. I try and cover all of the big handsets, budget friendly, as well as the more flagshipy premium stuff that hit the UK. Let us know your own tips and tricks for jump and ship down in the comments below. Please do put subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.